Hi, I'm Gene DeClerc, and this is the latest in our series of short videos for Birth by the Numbers. This one's entitled, Is There a Problem with Too Many Big Babies in the United States? This project starts out looking at inductions. Um, I'm part of a team that's been looking at these kinds of questions for some time in a survey called Listening to Mothers. And in it, we asked mothers questions around induction. And one of the questions was, did you try to self-induce? And what we found was about 29% of mothers in the survey said they tried to induce their labor, um, mostly to try to avoid a medical induction. 41% um, said that there was an attempted medical induction. In about three out of four cases, the induction actually worked and labor began. So overall, we had about a 30% induction rate in the listening to mothers survey. This is comparable to what national data shows. Here's a trend slide that shows the increase in reported inductions over time. And most research suggests that this is an undercount, that actual inductions are at a much higher rate. But as part of that, we asked the question of mothers, what was the reason you were given for the induction that you had? And this is what we found. Um, much to our surprise, when we included an option for a care provider was concerned about the size of my baby, it actually came up in about one in six cases and uh, fifth ranked overall. So we asked the same question in the context of reasons for a cesarean, and there it came in fifth again as a significant reason. So the obvious question becomes, is there a problem with more and more big babies in the United States? Um, it's a natural assumption you think as women get healthier, babies would get bigger. Um, it's a very powerful argument, a very effective argument. It's totally wrong, uh, as the next slide will illustrate, but it's still a powerful argument. If you take a look at this slide, babies are not getting bigger. We limited this to singleton full-term babies in the United States, and what you find is that, in fact, they did grow back 25 years ago, but um, the proportion of large babies has actually stayed steady for a number of years now, with no change whatsoever. So then the question becomes, if babies aren't getting bigger, is there a perceptual change? So in that same survey, we asked mothers, near the end of your pregnancy, did your maternity care provider tell you that your baby might be getting quite large. And honestly, much to our surprise, 31% of the mothers said yes. Now, when they were told their baby was most likely to be large, the babies actually were a little bit larger by about 13 ounces, as this shows. It's 7.7 7 pounds, 14 ounces versus 7 pounds, 1 ounce. Were the babies extraordinarily large, which termed macrosomic, or 8 pounds, 13 ounces? Most of the time, overwhelmingly, no. 19% um, of the time, they were. When mothers weren't told it, it was about 5.5% of the time. Now the question becomes, does this have any impact on what happens to a mother in labor? And the next slide suggests that that's pretty much the case. Um, these are labor and delivery options, and what it compares is women with suspected large babies. Um, in other words, they were told yes means they were told they had a large baby, no means they weren't. And what you see is they were much more likely to try to self-induce, much more likely to get a medical induction, more likely to have an epidural, much more likely to request a cesarean, um, and actually having a cesarean, it's higher, but it's not significantly higher. Now, in research, you can never present this without saying the question, well, maybe these mothers were different. And so what we naturally do is control for as many things as we can. can. And in doing that, these were the findings, that after controlling for all of the things you would expect, age, race, education, payer source, these are the findings that, that held up. Self-induced, about twice as likely. Medical induction, about twice as likely. Epidural, about twice as likely. And asking for a cesarean, which is not very common at all. It's a pretty rare event, but was about four times as likely. So what's the lesson here? Um, language matters. What you tell a mother has an impact on how she actually will interpret what's going on. And telling a mother she's likely to have a big baby can have a profound impact on her feelings about whether or not she can have a vaginal birth. So, couple things that come out of the study. One, the predictions themselves were actually strongly related to mother's characteristics separate from their, um, the size of the baby. In other words, uh, non-Hispanic black mothers were much more likely to be told they were going to have a big baby. They were much less likely to actually have a big baby than white non-Hispanic mothers. Most of the time, the prediction of a big baby is actually inaccurate. Uh, larger babies, shorter, very large babies, larger babies are generally healthier babies, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. But it appears the, see, the mere telling of mothers that they might be having a large baby has an impact on the way they perceive their ability to give birth vaginally. 
And that's maybe the biggest lesson here, to be careful about the way that message is framed to mothers. If you want more videos such as this or general information, including the slides we just posted here, uh, go to birthbythenumbers.org. We'll continue to post videos like this by myself and a number of my students. Thank you.